Hey guys, welcome. We're trying something different. So I know it looks a little bit weird, but it's still me. It's still you. We're still going to do maths today. Um, so instead of typing in the chat like we normally do, you're going to chat in the little, find the chat on your YouTube um, page. Everyone try and find it. Try type something so I can check that you're all still there and I can hear from you. You can tell me <laughs> if you've written your exam already, you can tell me how your exam went. Otherwise, you can tell me how your day went, but find the chat and type something in, even if it's just, just hello, just so we can see that you guys know how to find it. Um. Miss G, I just want to maybe let's just um, these learners that are in the waiting room, just yeah. have them come in and then um, hopefully successfully send them over to Zoom. Sure, no problem. Um, I'm seeing that um, they're still joining, just waiting for your microphones to be on. Hi, Bokamuso. Hi, Tiamo. Just in case they missed my message on the on the chat room. Bokame, so did you see the message on the chat and did you see the link? So that's where we'll be having our, our, our lesson this evening on YouTube. Thank you. So you can exit, if you've managed to click on that link, you can exit this Zoom meeting, just click there and then you'll be able to join that instead of this. Hi Nolazi, I see your sound just came on. Um, please click the link, um, the link on the chat, and that's where we'll be having our lesson for this evening instead of here on Zoom. And then once you've successfully clicked that, you can exit this particular Zoom meeting. Okay, those of you who are on the YouTube channel, well done. I see you finding your way over to the chat. That's awesome. Um, so it's going to work the same way. It's just a way for you to communicate with me. So don't panic. Um, try and find it so that you know how to get there and you can um, say hello or <laughs> put an emoji just so that we know that you know how to find it so that if you have questions, you can communicate with me. Okay, while we're waiting for everyone to get here, because we have a couple of people who went into the Zoom meeting, um, there are two questions chilling on the board for you that I'd like you to give a try. So it's just finishing off the work that we started on Monday. So they're just two questions with factorization. We're going to do a little bit more on factorization, and then we're going to jump into our equation work and then into graphs. So give these two questions a try. And when you are happy with your answers, you're welcome to put them in the chat for us like you normally do. Remember with factorization, you need to factorize it as far as possible. So don't fall for the trap um, that I've set you with. Um, Tiamu, is, Tiamu is asking if um, they can stay here on Zoom. So Tiamu, we'd like you to please head over um, to YouTube um, just because we're trying that out and we want to see if it works. And we'll still be able to chat with you on the Zoom, on the YouTube. So it is really, it's the same as, as Zoom. So please just try to click on the link. And if you experience any problems, of course, just let us know. But everything should be working fine. So click on the link and then after it works, you can just exit um, the Zoom meeting. Yay, Kamba, you found your way to the YouTube channel. Excellent work. Joshua, you wrote your maths exam. You understood a lot, but the time killed you. Oh, no. Was it that you didn't have enough or you had too much time? Which one was it? Okay, guys, I'm just going to turn my video off so I can write on the screen properly. I'm just going to give you a couple more minutes. I know it's only two questions, um, but just because we're trying a new platform today and it's i want to give everyone a chance to get onto this channel oh yeah you know often people don't have enough time in maths exams it's one of the things you have to work on but it will get better and at least it's done
Okay, try to get your answers. As soon as you're happy with them, chuck them in the chat for me. Remember when we're doing factorization, you need to always check first to see if there's a highest common factor. That's our first goal. And then think about the different things we spoke about on Monday. Dots, trinomials, switcheroos, highest common brackets. Think of these things as you work through the questions. Do I have no answers coming in for question one or question two yet? I'm shook. I know you know how to do both of these because we spoke about them on Monday. I think you're just feeling shy. But it's the same, guys. It doesn't matter that we're on a different channel. It's just us still. Don't panic. And remember, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. As long as we have um, things we know what to work with, that's the goal. Let's see. Oh, wow, brave one again. I am loving the look of that answer. And you didn't fall for my trick, which I'm very happy with. Good. Hi, Tiamo. Welcome. You made it here. Well done. Oh, Joshua, don't panic. Often we feel like we could do better in exams. And as long as you tried your best, that's what matters. Okay, so I'm going to put the answer for number one up here um, because I'm seeing a lovely answer in our chat. And then I'm going to give you a little bit more time for question two while we get everyone on here. So for question one, the first thing we had to do was take out our highest common factor. So we took out our highest common factor of two and I was left with n squared minus 49. And now I have to think, well, I can still factorize this. This isn't factorized as far as it can be because I can do difference of two squares. And remember difference of two squares, think about what these letters are. Difference meaning a minus sign, two as in there are two numbers and squares as in both of these numbers are square numbers. Okay, so we're gonna keep that two there. We're gonna have two brackets for difference of squares. We're gonna square root that one. So we get an N and an N. We're going to square root our 49, so we get a 7 and a 7, and we have plus and minus. And if you wrote it the other way around, so if you're a 2 n minus 7 n plus 7, that is absolutely fine. And that is, oh, I'm just erasing everything useful here. That is our first question. Give question two a try for me. We didn't get a chance to do many of them. Um, on Monday because we ran out of time, but it's a trinomial. So try to figure out what's going to be in what bracket. And then when you're feeling when you're feeling confident, give me your answer in the chat. Canva, was that your answer for question one? You 
up on fire today. Nice. Okay, for our trinomials, this is where we're looking at question two, x squared minus 4x minus 21. Remember, we work with our factors of 21. Okay, so I've got 1 and 21, then I've got 3 and 7, and that's actually all of my factor pairs that I could work with. And I'm trying to get negative 4, and so I can see, well, I can obviously see that this is going to involve that 3 and that 7, but I want negative 4, so I want negative 7 plus 3, and that tells me what my brackets are. Come by, like those brackets, I think the only thing that happened is you've left off your 2 that needs to be in the beginning, because this was our original highest common factor, and we have to still keep in there, even though we do difference of squares in the next step. So we're going to have x plus 3, x minus 7, and that is our first two questions of factorization. Okay, I'm going to move into some um, work which kind of involves this factorizing that we've been doing but in a fraction form so don't panic when you see it we're going to start with something nice and easy so i want you to start with one and if you're feeling good with one then you can move on to two so the thing that we need to be doing is within each of these sections you're going to need to factorize so you're going to need to factorize that here you would need to factorize that, here you would need to factorize that, and you'd need to factorize that. So it's kind of practicing, practicing factorization and practicing fractions at the same time. So when you're factorizing, just remember your different keys, highest common factor, difference of two squares, trinomial, switcheroo, and highest common bracket. Think of these, and I want you to take these one at a time. Nice, Kamba, that is excellent for question two. Remember, we can't cancel things until we have one term. So basically, until we factorize everything. Our first goal here is to factorize everything. And then our second goal is to try and cancel whatever we can cancel. So just take it one step at a time. Oh, cool. I'm seeing some, some answers here and I'm liking it. Nice. Okay, so for question one, the first thing we were going to do is when we're looking at this numerator over here, I can take out a highest common factor of p squared. So I'm going to take out p squared as a highest common factor and I'd be left with p plus one all over p squared. And now my p squareds are going to cancel with each other. And so I'm left with my end answer of P plus one. So now that one should help you a little bit. <laughs> I love this little emoji, which like looks like a hug and a heart. It's just like, it's so cute. Okay, give question two a try. Question two, you're gonna have to do three different factorizations across the two fractions. Oh, these emojis are so cute. Yeah. 
I also hope you guys are ready for your puzzle today because it is a monster. It is so tricky because I feel like people keep on solving them too quickly. So I found a nasty, nasty one to give you today. It is still pictures though. <laughs> okay i'm gonna give you uh one more minute one more minute on this question keep working through it All right, let me go through this question with you. So first thing we want to do is we are going to just, I'm going to just do this step by step, okay? First thing I'm seeing is that I've got x squared minus 9. And that I can do difference of two squares with. So I have x plus 3, x minus 3. All right, now at the bottom, I've got this x squared plus 5x plus 6, and that is a trinomial. So I'm going to work with my factor pairs of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Now the tricky thing is that I can get 5 with both, both of those factor pairs, but because of this plus sign, I know that my signs have to be the same. And so I have to use 2 and 3 because I need to have the same signs. I'm going to have x plus 2 x plus 3. And I'm going to multiply that up here by my x plus 2. That's just this dude over here. Nothing fancy is happening to it. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to take out a highest common factor of 2. Okay, so this was highest common factor. This over here was a trinomial. And this up here was difference of two squares. Ah, Sia, hi, welcome. Welcome to our new channel. It's very exciting. We have found very cute emojis and we've been doing some factorization and that's all you've missed so far. So don't panic. Okay, once we have factorized everything, so once we have done this step over here, factorize everything, we can cancel things that are exactly the same as long as it's one top and one bottom. So I can take that x plus 2 and I can cancel with that x plus 2. Then I've got an x plus 3 that I can cancel with that x plus 3. And I've got this x minus 3 that I can cancel with that x minus 3. And so I'm actually just left with 1 over 2. And that is my whole answer to this entire gigantic question. This is very exciting. Okay, cool. Nice job. We are going to move into <laughs> um, see if the video quality is bad, try um, change the a quality of the thing so it might have it on a preset that's like 
200 and something. Try and get it up to 720. That should help. And if it doesn't, let me know. Maybe we can see if we can make a plan for you. I always find these questions very satisfying where they simplify down to something so easy. Okay, so we said we were going to do some equation work today. Um, so have a look at these two questions. I've started off nice and easy, so nothing hectic over here. And let's see how these go. So just try one and two for me, and then we'll move on to the sort of the trickier ones just now. And you just need to tell me what your answers are. So just say x is equal to this or x is equal to that, and we will, we will go from there. But I'll give you some time to try and work through it. And then at half past, I will give you my unbelievably hard puzzle that I found for you, which I'm very proud of for finding. Nice, Yamo. So our first answer is definitely seven. We're going to move that four onto the other side. So we're going to have X is equal to negative three minus four. Oh, good. I'm so glad it's better. Okay. And so therefore X is equal to negative seven. That's our answer for number one. Nice job. Okay. For number two, don't forget you need to do your distribution over here and here before you do anything funny. Oh, we have our first answer coming in. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit more time to keep on working through this question. Steps for this question. The first thing you want to do is distribute. Then you want to move your X's onto one side. You want to move your numbers onto the other side. And then you want to eventually solve for your answer so just do it step by step Oh no, have you tried to change your um, settings? Kumo, have you tried to change it to 720 to see if it's any better?
Okay, for question two, I'm just going to slowly start working through this. So the first thing we're going to do is our distribution. So we're going to have 3x, or oh, let me work in a different color because we've got a lot of orange happening on the screen right now. Okay, 3x plus, <laughs> so much more, much different. Okay, 5 times 1, which is 5, 5 times negative 2x, which is negative 10x, is equal to 19 minus 3x plus 2. Okay, so from here, I want to move my x's onto one side. So I'm going to keep this one, I'm going to keep this one, and I'm going to move that 3x onto the other side. Now, when I move it over, it changes sign. So I'm going to have 3x minus 10x, and then that 3x that's jumping over is going to become plus 3x. Oh, lovely answers coming through. Oh, good. I'm glad that it's a bit better. Then we have our five, which is going to jump over onto that side. So he's going to become negative five plus 19 plus two. And so we have three minus 10, which is negative seven and negative seven plus three, which is negative four X is equal to 16. And now we need x to be alone, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 4, and we get an answer of x is equal to negative 4. And I see a couple of you got that, which is great. And that would be our final answer there. So we're going to divide that 16 by negative 4, and we'll get our answer of x equals negative 4. Well done to those of you who got it. Okay. All right, I'm going to jump on to our next one. I'm going to try and make this a bit smaller so that, oh, actually, shame. Those of you who are struggling with um, quality, let me make it a bigger size. Okay, if you did not get negative 4, try and see um, where yours looks different to mine. Maybe when you move things over, you didn't change the sign. So just be careful that everything looks exactly like what I wrote there. Now for this question, if you are struggling to see what to do, remember you've got a trinomial there. So start by factorizing that trinomial and that will help. See if you remember your quadratic equations. Okay, so even if you're struggling with this question, then at least first try and factorize it. So see if you can give me what the two brackets would be once we factorize that trinomial. Ooh, we have our first answer coming in.
Okay, if we are looking at this question, first thing I want to do is factorize. So I need to get my factor pairs. Okay, good. I want to get my factor pairs of 27. So I've got 1 and 27. 2 doesn't go in, 3 goes in, so 3 and 9. And that's it. That's all I can do. 3 and 9 and 1 and 27. Now I'm trying to get negative 12. And my signs need to be the same. So both of those are going to have to be negative because negative 3 minus 9 is equal to negative 12. Okay, so my brackets are going to be x minus 3, x minus 9 is equal to 0. And when we have a quadratic equation like that, we say, well, that means that this bracket, so x minus 3 is equal to 0, or this bracket is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 9. Well done. I'm seeing some really good answers in the chat. Nice job, guys. See? Same, same, but difference. I can still communicate with you. We can see what's going on. It's nice. Okay. Get ready for your puzzle. I'm very excited about it. Um, and I'm so keen to see if anyone can get the answer. I'm going to put it on. And let's see if anyone can tell me what my answer to this would be. I'm trying to find out what a ring plus a gummy bear plus a lime plus a lollipop is equal to. Let's see if anyone can figure it out. <laughs> I told you it was a nasty one. My hint to you, no, wait, I don't know if I should give you a hint. Maybe I should give you a hint. No, I'm not going to give you a hint yet. You can tell me when you need a hint. And if you want to check answers, you can um, put them in the chat. So you can be like, okay, well, I think the gummy bear equals this. And if you're right, I'll let you know. <laughs> I did try to warn you that it was tough. Okay, I, 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 will, I will be nice to you. This right here, that's your hint. The bear is not 20. Oh, Kinsani, the gummy bear is definitely 16. Mm. The sweet, as in the lollipop, the sweet is not eight. As your final answer, 28? Lollipop is 16. <laughs> I'm so glad that no one solved this in about 10 seconds, like on Monday. I feel, I feel happy. It is not 32. Not 25. <laughs> not 50. <laughs> Are you just going to give me all the different numbers possible here? Are you just still feeling salty that you didn't really win the last week? 27, no. 54, no.
36. Yes. We did it. Woohoo. Yay. Oh, now I want to try and find like a good emoji and I can't find anything. <sighs> yes, well done on the 36. I'm so chuffed. Nice work. That was a hard question. You did really, really well. Okay. Let's try and let's try and understand why it is 36. Okay. So the key to this question was to see that the gummy bear and the lollipop were the same as each other, right? So that means that all three of these are the same. And so we can just say 48 divided by three, which means that this will just be Oh, sorry, 16, 16, and 16. Okay, so we know that that's 16, and we know that that's 16. Then it comes to, oh, this is also 16 over here. Okay, now it's telling us that 16 divided by something has to give us that same answer, which means that this must be 4, because 16 divided by 4 gives us 4. So now we know that that's 4 over there. And we know that this is 4 over here. And zero times four is the only thing that will give me zero. So that's zero. So it's four plus 16 plus zero plus 16, which is 36. Yay. Well done. Woohoo. One more. Oh, we haven't got much time though. And I need us to get through some more exam work. But I'll give you another one on Monday, I promise. Okay. All right, let's get back into this. Let's get into a fraction question. Now, remember here, the advice when we learned these um, right at the beginning of the year, try and make sure that you put those both over one so that you don't forget them when you find your lowest common denominator, which is what we want to do here. <laughs> You guys are much better at finding these emojis than I am. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even see the question. Is that a lemon? It was a lime slice. Kamba, you got it. No answers coming in for this question yet. Okay, lowest common denominator. Okay, so in this case, our LCD is going to be six because we want to find what everything can go into. So just to make your lives easier, we would have to multiply that by two. We'd have to multiply that by three, by six, and by six. So our LCD here is going to be six. 
So when I do that, that's like me saying 2 times x plus 2 minus 3 times 3x is equal to 6 times 1 minus 6 times 2x. Hopefully this is bringing back some memories from the beginning of the year. And once we have that same denominator, we are allowed to drop it. And then at this point, we just do our distribution. Then we want to get our x's on one side and our numbers on the other side. So 2x minus 9x plus 12x is equal to 6 minus 4. So we get 5x is equal to 5. We're going to divide both sides by 5, which means x is equal to 1. And that is that full equation from start to end. Let me know if there's anything here which is feeling confusing or something you're not understanding, something you need help with. All right, we're actually going to jump over from that. Uh, <laughs> um, and I actually think we are going to jump over patterns for the moment as well. We're just going to have a look at this graph over here. Okay, so what I've got is I have got a, a straight line graph. And let's just remember what the formula for a straight line graph is. So we have y equals mx plus c. That m, so in this case, our m, which is three, that tells us our gradient and our gradient is our slope. And then that six is our y-intercept, okay? So that there is the y-intercept. It's That means that's where it crosses our y-axis. Okay, so this first question here is I want you to, ooh, have I got something wrong? Six, I'm seeing six minus four today. <laughs> guys yes <laughs> six minus four is definitely not five six minus four is without a doubt two and i am just clearly completely losing the plot six minus five is definitely two and two over five is definitely our final answer over here thank you daphne clearly just losing my mind fully in all possible ways good spot Okay, um, I'm just going to give you a moment to write that down and then I'm going to scroll back down again. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so that's our y-intercept and that's our gradient. Remember, um, when we're wanting to sketch our graph, we need to find the x-intercept and we need to find the y-intercept. When we're looking for the x-intercept, we make y equal to zero. And when we are finding the y-intercept, we make x equal to zero. Okay, so do that. Find your two different intercepts. Get the coordinates of them. Plot them on a little graph on your side over there. 
And then we're going to draw it. And we're going to see if our lines look anything like each other. Hopefully they do. In this case, your y-intercept would be negative six. I'm not, I'm not going to give you the full answer. I'm just going to slowly start writing some things over here. So I'm going to make my y equal to zero over here. And here I'm going to make my x equal to zero. So in the one we're solving for y and the other one we're solving for x. And this means that my x value is what we land up finding and my y value will be zero. And here my x value is zero and we're looking for a y value. Uh, it's close number, it's going to be negative six. Yes, your x intercept is looking great. So I'm going to move that six over and I'm going to have three x, which means x is equal to two. And so my x intercept is two and zero. My y intercept is going to be zero minus six which is negative six. And so I'm gonna have zero and negative six. And so those are my two coordinates that I am working with. And once we have our coordinates, we can draw our graph. Make sure you have a ruler so you don't have squonky lines like I do right now. Then we need to find, I'll do it in different colors so you know which one I'm talking about. If I'm talking about this one here, my X value is zero, my Y value is negative six. And if I'm talking about this one over here, my X value is two and my Y value is zero. And then we just take our ruler and we connect, ooh, gross, that's such a skew line. Connect our two dots. We have an arrow at both ends and we give it its name. And hopefully yours will look a lot prettier than mine does. This is my y and this axis and my x. Okay, let me know if yours looks similar to mine, if it looks very, very different to mine. Um, tell me, tell me how you found this question. Yeah, that was, is, is that an answer? That was the question. Oh, good, Kamva, I'm glad yours looks the same. Okay, so when you get marks for this, you'd be getting marks for getting the correct X and the correct Y axis, and then for your general shape. Okay, okay, I'm gonna move down. Um, hopefully you guys have gotten this. If you haven't, just let me know. I can always scroll back up. Um, we're gonna jump past those two for now. We're gonna jump into here. Okay, 
Oh, the name for the line. Did I did I write the name wrong? Oh no no no, I did. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. The diagram of the graph sh <laughs> show two different straight lines. We've got a point zero and three over here, and then we've got the point three and zero, and they are the in x the, the x and y intercept of PQ, and then we've got zero and negative one, which is the y intercept of RT. So the first question that they are wanting here is the equation. So the y equals mx plus c. They want that as an answer of PQ, and PQ is this line over here. So now when I want the equation, that means I have to find m and I have to find c. And m is our change of y over our change of x. So that's where we should start. And then we can sub in a point to find m. Let me know how it goes. Okay, we're getting an answer for M coming in. Let's have a look. So Y, so three minus zero over zero minus three is going to give us three over negative three, which gives us negative one. Good. So my M is definitely negative one. And you don't even need to sub anything for your Y intercept because they've kind of, they've given you a bit of a helping hand there. That is your Y intercept. A Y intercept is where it crosses your Y axis. And so the, this graph is going to be y equals negative 1x, that's our m, and then our y-intercept up here, plus 3. Come, the nice job. I just saw that in the chat. Excellent work. Okay, next, I want you to find the equation of rq. Now, rq... We've also been given the y-intercept, so you've been given c, but you need to think about what m would be. And the important thing here is that this line is parallel to that line. So I want you to think what it means for the gradients when lines are parallel to each other. Think about what that means. Okay, when we have lines that are parallel to each other, so if I have parallel lines, then my gradients, so my m values, my gradients are the same. Excellent, Canva, well done. Okay, so my gradient has to be negative 1 because it has to be the same because they're parallel lines. So y is going to equal negative 1. And now I know my y-intercept is negative 1, not 3. So negative 1x minus 1. Well done, Kamba. That was really, really good. Beautiful. And that is actually where we are going to call it a night. 
for today. I'm so proud of you for doing so well on this new platform and for chatting and for putting your answers there. I know it was a bit different, um, but I'm going to pass the mic over on to Tula and he's going to chat to you. Um, you can say what worked, what didn't work, just be honest. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. But thanks, thanks for trying something new with me today. And I'll see you on Monday. Yeah, hello, grade nines. Um, that's really all I, I want to say as well, that congratulations for trying out this platform and being so open. I know a number of you came to Zoom and you were so smooth and willing to switch to YouTube. So thank you for that. Um, just write down on the chat um, how you felt about using this new way of of having the lesson, did it work? I know quality was an issue, but I would hope that a lot of you, when you click on the quality and change on YouTube, um, you managed to get some help. So just let us know how that went, how you feeling, how was the lesson today, just so we know where your head is at. You know, we like to, to make sure that we're all on the same page. So just type on the chat and then um, while I share my screen and I'll read your responses as soon as I'm done sharing. Um, just one second you should be able to see my screen in a few seconds if you can't just let us know so we can help you so we have our last classes next week our last exam prep classes and where we'll be doing um G uh, paper two to prepare you guys i know a number of you have already written your exams but also a, a good number of you guys still have not written so hopefully this will be very useful and help with your exam prep i know i spoke um i spoke on monday about um i spoke on monday about the q a that would be happening afterwards so that is not confirmed yet we're still trying to work out the logistics and depending on how many people will still actually be having the exams um, it may happen or it may not happen so for now this is all we have just take this the paper too as it may be our last classes or it may not be but we'll give you an update by the end of next week so you'll know what is happening um, i think that's it from my side i'm not sure if jen you have anything to add um, on your side no nothing from me just keep us um just don't forget to write in the chat how you found this new um, way of doing the lesson before you leave. But otherwise, it was lovely seeing you, and I will see you on Monday. Yeah, I see Kumo is saying it was great. Adelaide is saying it was also good. Bonita is saying it was great. No, you guys are very open to new things. So I was expecting nothing less than you all still being participating and still being active. So I'll see you all on I'll see you all on Monday next week. Good luck to those who are still writing the exams. Congrats to those who have already written. We'll see you all next week for the next lesson. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.